Hi, I'm Alex Alguacil. Today I want to talk to you about Goyescas by Granados, one of the landmarks of the Spanish piano music. As I usually do in these videos, I will talk about the images behind the music and the musical language that tries to express those images. In the case of Goyescas it is simple because it was inspired by the paintings of Goya and the world that was depicted in them. In addition, in Goyescas we can find a narrative, a love story, which makes it easy to follow for audiences and performers. So let's explore together this summit of the Spanish piano literature. Goyescas is one of the major pieces of the Spanish piano literature, along with Iberia by Albéniz and, to a different extent, Fantasia Bética by Falla. While Albéniz and Falla's music are closer to the flamenco style, the music of Granados is composed in a more romantic way, like that of Schumann or Chopin, while preserving some nationalistic Spanish origins. Granados' music offers a more accessible language for the general public than, for example, the more avant-garde language of Fantasia Bética by Falla. For audiences, this romantic style, the virtuosic writing for the piano, the easy melodies to follow and the clear inspirations from Goya's paintings has made Goyescas one of their favorite pieces. As its name indicates, Goyescas was born inspired by the paintings of Francisco de Goya. In 1898, Granados visited the Prado Museum and became fascinated by the world depicted in Goya's paintings. The colors, the characters, their attire, the way of life and different customs of the Madrid scene during the 18th century became a sort of obsession for him. As he himself put it, I fell in love with the psychology of Goya and his palette, with him and the Duchess of Alba, with his women, his battles, loves and conquests. That pink-white quality of the chicks against the lace and black velvet have dazzled me. Inspired by this, Granados started to compose music, write poems, and he even drew some sketches in the style of Goya. All ideas to help develop his music, and some of them he would later use in Goyescas. He also drew some sketches of the main characters that appear in Goya's paintings, Majos and Majas. But who exactly are these characters? Majos and Majas were the names given to popular and lower class characters of the end of the 18th century in Madrid and some other parts of Spain. They appear in many of the paintings and scenes created by Goya. A majo was a male character that represented the manhood of the Spanish type, and a maja was a maiden characterized by the appeal of her self-confidence. They would dress in a specific and characteristic way that defined them, and curiously enough, the nobility of the time tended to follow this fashion. That's why sometimes we see in Goya's paintings aristocratic characters dressing like majos. But they were not only distinguished by their way of dressing, but also by their attitudes and character. Women could be rude and men defiant. Love and passion were some of their main traits, and along with their gallantry and casualness, defined a challenging but charming personality at the same time. This is important because that is the character Granados wants his music to be played, and he writes some of these attributes specifically in the score. Among the material he created out of the inspiration from Goya, he put together a group of six pieces which became Goyescas, the piano suite as we know it today giving names to each one of the pieces which describe different episodes from Goya's paintings. According to Fernando Periquet, two paintings from Goya's caprichos were a direct inspiration for Granados. 
The one called Tal para cual, Two of a Kind, was used as inspiration for the first piece of the suite, which Granados called Los Requiebros, a scene that describes the flirtations and compliments between a couple. The gallant style of the music and embellished melodies sets up the character of the whole suite. Then El Amor y la Muerte, Love and Death, titled by Granados with the same name, became number five, describing the death of the Maho in the arms of Maha. The rest of the pieces were inspired by other scenes from the world of Goya, and they completed the remaining suite with titles that Granados himself added. Goyescas was then published in two books, the first one that contained four episodes and the second one that had the other two. There is still another painting by Goya called El Pelele, the Dummy, from which Granados composed another piece with the same name that is usually played with the rest, since it's similar in its virtuosic nature. However, this piece was not included in the piano suite, but he did name it Escena Goyesca, and it is one among other several smaller compositions he wrote besides the piano suite that are also considered to be part of the Goyesque musical universe of Granados. Granados subtitled the piano suite Los Majos Enamorados, The Majos in Love, so it is indeed a love story. Love and passion are infused within the work and eventually drama makes its appearance too. The six pieces of the piano suite share a sort of narrative that brings the whole thing together. Granados wrote in the score indications giving some specific meaning or action in the music, which again helps to create a narrative that unifies and binds the piece together. The scope, the expression and the drama behind the piano suite makes a glimpse at something bigger, and after the suggestion of a friend, Granados turned the piano suite into an opera, to be premiered in Paris first and later at the Metropolitan Opera in New York. For the structure of the opera, coming from the piano suite, he made some changes. First, he removed Serenata del Espectro. Then, he rearranged the order of the previous pieces. He placed El Pelele at the beginning, and then he created other scenes using musical material from the other Goyesque music, creating a one-act opera with nine scenes divided into three parts, a new structure adapted to the libretto of the opera. The libretto is a simple story about majos and jealousy. Simplified, there are two couples, four characters in the story. On the one hand, Paquiro and Pepa, a lower-class majos, and on the other, Fernando and Rosario, of a higher social class. One day, Paquiro reminds Rosario that they once had something together, and he invites her to dance with him again that night. Fernando and Pepa get jealous at this, and that night, with everybody at the ball dance, after a discussion and fight, Fernando challenges Paquiro to a duel. After the laments of Rosario about the situation, and the later reconciliation between Fernando and Rosario expressing their love to each other, the duel finally takes place and Fernando loses his life. The story was indeed simple, but the music did express the passion of the characters and the drama behind. Poetically speaking, love and death are two main traits of the Spanish psyche, not only present in music, but in other arts and literature as well. Granados uses melodies and motifs to express how this love and death drama evolves, and that's what I'd like to show you more in depth next, the themes and the motifs of Goyescas. Granados' style is very improvisatory, spontaneous. Many of his melodies were born after he improvised them at the piano. His melodies become the main substance of his work, although the harmonies are important too in Goyescas, as we will see later. In Goyescas, Granados used two Spanish popular tunes, one for Requiebros and the other one for La Maja y el Ruiseñor, the Maiden and the Nightingale. 
Granados will create other melodies in a similar style that sometimes seem to come out from these two popular tunes, similar in its melodic direction, amount of notes or intervallic gestures. But Granados himself stated that he only used those two popular tunes and that in no other of the Goyescas pieces are there any other popular themes. They are definitely written in popular style, but they are originals. Granados embellishes his melodies, repeats them ornamented, and in this way he creates new original themes. In Goyescas he uses motifs or leitmotifs, like in an opera, that represent different characters or feelings showing up at different moments of the composition. Some of them appear clearly indicated in the score. The first motif appears in the first piece, Requiebros, which could be translated as the flirtations or the compliments. Granados will ornament and embellish this melody, representing the playful flirtations between the majos. In Requiebros we'll see this melody ornamented and embellished in many ways or variations of this tune with great flexibility of tempo and rubato all representing the sensual moves, the knowing glances, the coquetry and the complicity between the majos. And during the suite of Goyescas we'll see how this ornamenting triplet becomes part of other motifs like the fandango. And this triplet will go on evolving in flirtations to a quintuplet expanding the coquetry, each time more playful and more ecstatic. This quintuplet becomes a very characteristic element of many motifs in Goyescas, and it appears in the next motif. This love theme that represents the majos professing their love to each other, and this theme will appear in many different ways in Goyescas according to the different moods. This appears first in the previous piece, a moment of joyful love, then an embellished version of it depicting how in love the couple is, and dramatically later on when the majo has been mortally wounded. This characteristic rhythmic pattern will appear constantly in Goyescas, in different gestures or melodic directions, with a loving feeling sometimes, but also despairingly dramatic. When this motif appears going up, seems to express a warm and embracing love. And when going down, seems to express a passionato lament. And we'll see how this motif gets transformed into other motifs. If we play it slowly, it becomes the motif of Fandango. Then we have the famous motif of La Maja y el Ruiseñor, one of the most well-known pieces of the Spanish piano music, which is also called Quejas, which means laments, a Spanish popular tune which is harmonized by Granados here very tragically, expressing the laments and the sadness of La Maja. Mm -hmm. 
We'll see a memory of this motif later when the Maho has been mortally wounded, expressed sorrowfully by the Maha with melancholy. The ending part of this theme seems to be a separate element that Granados will use more expressively and more declamatory, and I believe it can be interpreted as a Maha's lament in later pieces. The Maha's motif will show up again at the end of Goyescas, after the Maho is dead, as it indicates with a happiness in the grief, a yearning final memory of the longed-for happy days of love. There is another motif that appears constantly in Goyescas that doesn't have a name but seems to express the memory of a past love. The gesture of this melody seems to suggest the majos embracing to each other tenderly with gentleness. This is another motif that will appear in many different ways in Goyescas according to the mood. I believe this theme has its origin in a part of the Requiebros theme, and we can find subtle variations of this motif in several pieces. Caprichoso in Requiebros, or calmly and conclusive by the end of Quejas. And we'll find it later on completely transformed and used as a separate element to express many feelings, from grief to anger. Then we have wonderful parts where many of these themes and motifs appear in Amor y la Muerte, where Granados himself said that all the themes of Goyescas appear. We'll see how they come up at the same time in some passages, interconnected and establishing dialogues between themselves, or we'll see how they transform into other motifs, like in a beautiful passage in the middle section of El Amor y la Muerte, where the Lament's theme becomes the Requiebros theme. The last piece of Goyescas, when the ghost of the dead Majo appears, is a recollection of what has happened before, and memories of the past themes will appear. Not only the themes, but little elements of those themes. The same way we saw the triplets of Requiebros appear in Fandango, we see how other themes played quickly become other motifs, or other elements become part of other themes. There is a dramatic passage that better exemplifies this. We have seen how the melodies of Goyescas become the main support of the spirit of the music, but the harmonies are important too, because they give us that Spanish sound. And it has to do with a chord progression, a cadence, that sometimes it's called Spanish cadence. This cadence can be played in a more or less dissonant way, depending on the composer. Granados uses this cadence in a more direct and triadic way, more simple. And Granados adds another chord to this progression, another dominant chord. And we have this new chord progression that becomes very characteristic in Goyescas.
And I personally see this cadence transformed in the last piece of Goyescas when the ghost appears. We'll go from... to... And Granados adds four more chords. It seems like the ghost is slowly appearing, misterioso, into this piece that doesn't really have a tonal center and it's appropriately blurred, with memories of the past becoming real, like a ghost coming back. We can see how the bass notes of this cadence become a chromatic and scary melody by itself. We can hear it when the ghost is plucking its guitar, running around, and when it's playing arpeggios with it. And maybe we could even speculate about the notes of this cadence showing up in some other passages as bass melodies. So we go from... And even And this cadence will serve as a harmonic bass for those two popular tunes that Granados uses same or similar cadences that Granados uses to harmonize those tunes. In the case of La Maja, we have the same cadence, but in another key. And in the case of requiebros. And Granados uses this cadence in other compositions, like Serenata Goyesca. I hope you enjoyed these ideas about Goyescas and they can help you get a better understanding of this work. For audiences to follow better the music and for musicians to help get a more expressive interpretation. To finish this video, I'd like to recommend some recordings. There are many recordings of Goyescas, including the ones that Granados himself made for the Walter Mignon piano rolls. But I think it's fair to recommend the recordings of the two pianists that follow the Granados school. Granados had a student, Frank Marshall, who became the teacher of well-known Alicia de la Rocha, who has several recordings of Goyescas, but also the teacher of Rosa Sabater, not so well-known internationally because her career sadly stopped abruptly, but who made a wonderful live recording of Goyescas, which is actually a personal favorite of mine. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you want to know more about Spanish piano music, you can find more videos in my channel and you can subscribe if you'd like to receive notifications about my next videos.